Hello, and welcome back. I'm Matthew Lay, and now we're going to begin a study on electromagnetism. So let's get started. First, we have some objectives. We want to understand the terms and to describe the concepts found in magnetism before we can even study electromagnetism. And then we want to understand what a dipole uh, magnetic element is and its physical properties and uh, relate how current through a wire affects the magnetic field around the wire. And um, given the current direction or the windings on electromagnet, be able to determine the poles of that electromagnet. Okay, so first let's talk about magnetism. We're going to get some terms down so um, we can uh, speak intelligently about electromagnetism. So, um, of course, I'm showing a compass here. Uh, a compass works on the magnetic pole of the Earth. Um, so we have to understand magnetism um, as it relates in the physical world before we can talk about electromagnetism. So let's talk about some terms. A, a magnet is just any body that possesses the property of attracting substances. Uh, most commonly is iron, but there are other um, uh magnetic devices that uh, magnet ma magnetic materials that we can use magnetite is a natural substance um, that contains magnetic properties uh, it's uh, it's kind of a phenomenon and a lot of scientists don't even understand why magnetite is magnetic we just know that it is and there's a lot of studying that goes on it's also kind of interesting that magnetite is uh, mined out of the earth and the largest deposit is out in the ocean, uh, about a mile deep. So it's uh, not the easiest substance to uh, obtain. Uh, magnetic field, so a dipole force that attracts specific materials. Uh, and if it attracts a material, that material is called magnetic. Dipole is just a fancy way of saying it has two poles, di meaning two, um, north and a south pole. And uh, the lines of force, we're going to talk about this. In fact, I'm showing a picture here. This is an old experiment that used to be done in classrooms. I don't know if it is done anymore where you have a bar magnet. That's what the red and blue bar is there. And then you put a piece of clear plastic over the top and you sprinkle iron filings. Iron is magnetic. And uh, the iron filings will align themselves um, on these lines of force that are, are entering and leaving this magnet. It's really a pretty neat little experiment. So let's continue our terms. So the poles, the poles of a magnet are labeled north and south, as I'm showing here. Sometimes uh, north is red and south is blue. Um, in this case, they're depicting north is red and south is green. I've seen it both ways. Uh, the north pole is where the lines of force exit this bar magnet. You can kind of see that these black lines are the lines of force that are leaving the magnet, and they're showing that with the arrow. And conversely, in the south pole, they they return back to the south pole here, okay? So it is a looping action that is happening there. And then we're able to harness that and be able to do things with it. Dipole just means two poles. In this case, it, uh, we, we label them north and south. Um, the lines of force are the strongest at each pole. And you can see they're closer together here. And the farther away they get from the pole, you see how they're farther away from each other. They're not nearly as strong as they are at that uh, center of the each pole, north and south pole. And... So, the, so as you get farther away from the magnet, the lines of force weaken. Okay, let's talk about some principles. Polarity. Polarity um, talks about the opposite poles, north and south. And so we're able to distinguish one end from another. There's going to be a distinguishable north pole and a distinguishable south pole. The north pole we almost always label with letter N. The south pole with the letter S. Magnetic flux is the entire group of those magnetic field lines um, that flow out of the north and into the south. So the, it, 
this is a simple depiction, it would be all of these lines. And of course, this is very uh, rudimentary. The There would be a whole host of black lines um, exiting and leaving. So I, I, I reversed the north is on the left and the south is on the right. So you see that the we're, we're going around from north to south in that direction now. Okay, All of those lines together is called the flux. Okay, so here is a principle. A, the term domain is a region within a material that has some sort of specific polarity. So everything has a, a charge to it. Uh, we, we learned that in the atomic lesson. And what a domain is, is just a collection of those atoms in that material that make up a specific domain. And that domain has a general north and south to it. Um, so you can think of this when we studied coulombs, and a coulomb is a certain collection of electrons. Well, this is a certain collection of atoms. And if you collect a certain amount of atoms, you're going to get a certain north, distinguishable north and south pole. The only uh, thing that I want to point out here is these domains can be random in orientation. In fact, anything that is not magnetized has random orientation. So uh, you notice the arrows, you know, they're, they're, they're pointing towards the, the north and but, you know, north in this collection of items is kind of in the uh, downward fashion. This is in the upward fashion. Both of them are from right to left, but um, they're, they're randomly oriented. And when you collect all that together, you don't ever get a specific north and south pole for this uh, piece of metal here. Um so juxtaposed to that is when all of the domains are oriented in the same direction. When they all, when they are all oriented in the same direction, that item is said to be magnetized or it has magnetic properties. Now this could be a bar magnet made of magnetite and it just possesses that. We don't have to do anything to it. Um, those those uh, elements are just aligned. Or it could be a substance that we have manipulated um, with electricity uh, to get this same effect. We'll, we'll talk about that some more. Okay, so a particular law, and this, this ports right back into our atomic lesson, is unlike poles are attracted to one another. So north and south are attracted to one another, and conversely, like poles repel from one another. So north and north... Uh, repel from each other, and I don't have a graphic for it, but if the, they were flipped around the bottom and south and south were facing each other, they would repel one another. And the the uh, the visual that always helps me with this is those little wooden trains that aren't electric, and but they have magnets to make the cars stick together. And um, you, you would have the engine, and then you'd have a car, and you'd have to make sure that you get the car rotated in the proper direction, or they would not connect to one another. They would actually push each other apart. Um, and that is one end of the little car was the north pole of the magnet, and the other end of the little car was the south pole of the magnet. Okay, so magnet, magnetic materials. Not all materials are magnetic, but mag, mag, materials that are magnetic can either attract or repel uh, a magnet. Um, when they are magnetized themselves. Permeability is a term that we use to say how um, easily it is for us to manipulate a material and make it magnetic because we're working our way towards an electromagnet and that's what we're doing with electricity. So the perme permeability has a quantity, but it has no units because it's technically it's a ratio. We don't get into the, the math in this at all. I just want you to understand the concepts. Um, a material that is easily magnetized is said to be have a high permeability. So anywhere from 50 to 3,000 on the, uh, the scale, the permeability scale. And uh, something that is very difficult uh, to get magnetized or a magnet won't stick to it, has low permeability, um, which is one 
a material that is one and less. We're going to actually look at some materials here. Okay, so uh, something that is ferromagnetic has a high permeability. That means it's between uh, 50 and the 300 scale on permeability. So iron, steel, nickel, cobalt are all high permeability. Now we use iron and steel a lot when we actually make motors and transformers and that sort of stuff. It's a easily, easily obtained commodity um, and inexpensive. Nickel is more expensive as, as well as cobalt. And we can find these on the periodic table of elements. And there's a whole chemistry lesson that we could go into as to why they are higher in permeability than other materials. But uh, that's beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. So something that is paramagnetic, that means it is has low permeability. Um, aluminum, platinum, uh, magnesium, and chromium all are paramagnetic. You can get some sort of attraction, but um, it's it's not really going to be considered. And then there's things that are uh, diamagnetic, which are extremely low. And I want you to kind of understand the the uh, how this relates to the electrical field. Notice what we have there: copper, gold, silver, and zinc, all conductors. So luckily, uh, things that conduct very well are not magnetic. Uh, if, if they were, we would have an issue, um, much like uh, in dry weather, you'd have static cling from fabric uh, to your skin. We would have, with a wire with no current going through it, it would still have magnetic properties um, that could cause some issues uh, electrically making, making noise on lines and things like that. So uh, what I really want you to, to get out of this is uh, iron steel, iron and steel are ferromagnetic, meaning they have very magnetic properties. Um, that's why a refrigerator door is is receives a refrigerator magnet very well because typically that's a painted steel door. Even the ones that are stainless steel are much higher in steel um, than they are in some other materials that used to make them uh, the magnets not stick to them. And our conductors are not magnetic at all, which uh, which is very good. Um, okay, so now we're going to get into different types of magnets. So there is a permanent magnet made of magnetite. There is something that's a temporary magnet. Refrigerator magnets are actually temporary magnets. They're, like I said, uh, uh, magnetite is not easily obtained. And so they make temporary magnets and, um, and they're cheap. So that's why they wind up on your refrigerator. And then there's an electromagnet, and that's really what we're here to study. And uh, the study of this, this electromagnet and this phenomenon between electricity and magnetic principles is really what makes our industry possible. Um, it's really pretty exciting, actually. So let's, let's get into electromagnetism. So when we're talking about this phenomenon, we're really studying this man's work, Hans Christian Orsted. Um, he's a Danish um, scientist, and uh, there's actually still a power company in uh, in Denmark that is uh, named in his na name. Um, but he's known as the father of electromagnetism, and he actually kind of stumbled across this. He was studying electricity, and he was getting ready for an exper uh, for a uh, conference. And uh, he was energizing a conductor, and he just so happened to have a compass next to it. And he noticed every time he energized the conductor, the compass moved. Um, so he discovered this relationship between electrical current through a conductor and the magnetic field around the conductor. And uh, he discovered when the conductor carries current, it produces a magnetic field around it. And he really kind of devoted the rest of his life to studying this. And he under he uncovered five different characteristics about this relationship that we're going to talk about now. Okay, so the first characteristic is when current flows through the conductor, there exists a rotating magnetic field encircling around the conductor. Okay, so what I'm depicting here to the right, this would be looking right down a wire that you've cut off. And the plus sign means that that's what's coming out of the positive side of the power source. 
So if uh, current is coming out of that wire at us, there's going to be a magnetic field that rotates around that wire, and the magnetic field is depicted with the, uh, the red lines with arrows on them. Okay, so that's the first finding is that there's this magnetic field around the wire. Uh, that alone was was pretty groundbreaking. But he went on to find um, some other principles that the actual uh, relationship between the magnetic field and the wire itself, if the wire was straight, is, is it's at a 90 degree angle um, that it's being um, produced. Now, this animation here to the side is showing, well, that looks like a spiral. Well, what's being generated is at 90 degrees, but because current is not stationary, it's moving, it actually creates a spiral, much like stretching out a slinky. And, uh, but the, uh, you're, you can see here this, this is like a unit circle here, and this is a Cartesian coordinate that is showing that the angle at which it is coming off of the wire is at 90 degrees, which is very, very important for us to understand when we try to generate electricity um, or uh, use electricity for motors and things like that. The third characteristic is if you change the direction of current in the wire, you're going to change the direction of the magnetic field's rotation. Okay, this is what makes a motor reversible. Um, it's, it's, again, it's really pretty cool. So again, this upper left-hand corner is showing current coming out of the positive of the battery. And if it's coming out of the positive of the battery, we are rotating in that direction. Here, if it's returning to the negative of the battery, it's rotating in the opposite direction. So if it's coming out of the positive, it's going in that direction, we are going to be rotated counterclockwise. If we reverse polarity on the battery or the power source and we, we change the current through the conductor, then we are going to also change that rotation to clockwise in this lower right-hand section. Okay, the fourth characteristic, the strength of the field is directly proportional to the magnitude of the current. Okay, so here, if I have one amp of current flowing through here, I'm going to have a certain magnetic field strength. Now, so far, I've only shown one little orbit around the wire. Of course, there's multiple orbits, um, much like um, an atom. And so there's going to be a magnetic field uh, of multiple lines of flux around that wire. And let's say that this has one amp of current flowing through it. So if that has one amp, that would look like the magnetic field. Well, if I doubled that to two amps, now we're going to get double the amount of strength, field strength here. And if you notice, um, we, I am twice the distance away from my conductor that I was here as far as my field strength. So the, the field strength is going to get stronger in strength and in distance from the wire. The fifth characteristic is the strength of the field um, is inversely proportional to how far away it is from the wire. Okay, so the closer to the wire the uh, magnetic field is, the stronger it is. Okay, that's why it's inversely proportional. If, uh, if D is distance, if D is very small, the, uh, the strength of the magnetic field is going to be very high. And as D gets larger, as D increases in length, the magnetic field gets weaker. So you can see that here. So here is our conductor. Close to the conductor, I'm depicting that with a thick red line. And then as I get farther away, notice the red line gets thinner and thinner. And that is showing the, um, the field strength gets weaker as you distance grows away from the wire. Okay, so now how can we actually determine the rotation. Well, there are a couple rules that we can use. There's the right hand grip rule, um, and this is the first one. There's, there's two ways to look at this rule. But the first one, if you grip the conductor with your thumb pointed in the direction of current, and I'm talking conventional current, if it's pointed in the direction of conventional current, 
your right fingers will curl around the wire in the direction that the magnetic field is rotating. So you can see here in this uh, depiction, the thumb is pointed in the direction of current, currents labeled with I. The fingers are rotating around the conductor in the direction that the rotating magnetic fields are coming around the, um, the wire. Um, magnetic field strength is represented by the letter B in mathematical formulas. It's measured in Weber's. We don't get into any of those formulas, um, but that's why the letter B is, is being depicted there just for the, the quantity of magnetic field strength. Okay, so that is the right hand grip rule number one. Okay, so again, thumb points in the direction of current, and that's conventional current. And your fingers, if you imagine or go ahead and grip around the wire, will rote, will, will your fingertips will be pointed in the direction of rotation. Now, if, uh, if you prefer to study electricity in electron current flow, all you have to do is just change your hand. Um, so if you point your thumb in the direction of electron current flow, then the uh, fingers of your left hand will be rotating around the wire in the direction of rotation. Okay. So um, that's just two ways of looking at uh, the same thing. The rotation would be the same. You just have to switch your hands. Right hand is for conventional current. Left hand is for um, electron current flow. Okay, second grip rule, okay? So this is, if we actually have a coil of wire, we're gonna reverse our fingers in um, how they're depicting the, uh, the elements that they're depicting. So our index fingers are gonna wrap around in the direction of current flow now, okay? So we're just flip-flopping the thumb and the fingers. The, uh, fingers on the right hand are going to wrap around in the direction of conventional current flow. And the thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field lines. Okay. Now, if we're talking about a conductor, those, those lines we just learned are going to be going in a circle. Well, now what we've done is in a coil of wire here, this is an electromagnet, we've actually made the current go around in circles so that the magnetic field lines will go straight. That's why we're reversing our finger orientation. So now our thumb is gonna point in the direction of our magnetic field lines. We're gonna go through some examples here that's really gonna illustrate this for us, okay? So let's look at a problem. I've got a very, very simple magnet here. This gray box here would be like an iron rod. Iron is high in permeability, so that's why we want to use it to be able to manipulate the domains within that iron rod to make them all point in the same direction. And if we do that, we know that we're gonna have a magnet. It's called an electromagnet because electricity is required for us to be able to orient those domains from north to south throughout the material. The black line here is a very, very simplified depiction of a wire wrapped around that iron core. That wire would not just be these three turns. It would be 3,000 turns. There would be a, a lot of turns. But we're, I've simplified it here just for us to be able to um, illustrate how we can determine which pole is north and south, okay? So if I energize this, and we're, we're talking about a direct current electromagnet in this case, if I energize this, if I put the positive on the, uh, the left wire here and the negative on the right wire, we are from here on out, we're just going to be talking about conventional current. I'm not going to flip back and forth between the two. So conventional current is going to go around the back of this this rod and then it's going to come around the front here okay so what you want to do when you do these on your worksheets tests and quizzes is uh, go ahead and write on the the quiz the direction that current is moving with just drawing a simple arrowhead so we're going to draw some arrowheads here meaning conventional currents coming out of the back going behind there and then it comes down the front and then it wraps around behind the back comes around down the front then wraps around again behind the back and comes around the front and then goes to the 
negative of the power source, whether it's a battery or a power supply, okay? So that's the first step is we want to denote on our picture the direction of conventional current flow. Okay, next we're going to use our right-hand grip rule number two, okay? So we're going to use our index fingers to point in the direction of the um, conventional current flow, okay? So if I bring uh, my right hand, remember it has to be the right hand for conventional current flow, and I point my index finger in the direction of conventional current flow, it would be pointed down, and then if you... Uh, Notice the thumb is pointed from left to right, and that is going to be the direction of magnetic field lines or field flow. <coughs> Excuse me. So that means that we have our magnetic field lines are moving from left to right on the screen here. Okay, now we just talked about magnetic field lines exit the north and enter the south of a magnet. Well, if that's true, then inside the magnet, that means that the magnetic field lines would have to go from south to north, okay? So that means that, so our magnetic field lines flow from south to north inside an electromagnet, okay? So that means the left here would be the south of our electromagnet and the right would be the north. Now that kind of makes sense once you think about it, because the magnetic field lines exit the north, right? And then we said they enter back into the south. Well, they keep going. They, they go right through the magnet and they, they come out and, uh, and go around in, in circles here, okay? So those magnetic lines of force are always moving. And in the case of an electromagnet, they're moving as long as it's energized. Um, in the case of a uh, bar magnet, they're, they're moving all the time. Okay, so that's a very common thing that students struggle with is they move from north to south outside the magnet and south to north inside the magnet. So always, always remember um, that distinction uh, outside versus inside. Okay, let's change the current direction and see how that manipulates our poles. Okay, so I'm going to have plus to the left now and minus to the right. The wrapping of the wire is still the same. All I did was reverse the, uh, the positive and the negative of my power source to my electromagnet. So now current is going to go up the front. Okay, Before it was going down, now it's going up the front here, right? And then it wraps around the back and it goes up the front here. And then it's going to go around the back and it goes up the front here. Then it goes around the back and returns to the negative of the power supply. Okay. So we're going to go ahead on our worksheet or our quiz or test, we're going to write three up arrows heads showing the direction of conventional current. Okay, now we're going to use our right hand grip rule number two again, and we are going to oops, um, bring our right hand again, always remember to use your right hand, and your index finger is going to point in the direction of conventional current flow, so it would be pointed up. And then your thumb now is pointed from right to left. And that is the direction of your magnetic field lines, which means that the flow is going to be now from right to left of our magnetic field lines. And we know that our magnetic field lines flow from south to north inside the magnet. That means to the right would be the south pole and to the left would be our North Pole. So in changing the direction of current flow, we change the polarity of our magnet. This concept is exactly how a DC motor goes forward and reverse. If you're using a, a, a battery powered drill to drill holes and then you, you flip it to reverse, that's all you're doing is you're reversing the polarity of the battery um, to the coil of wire and it reverses the direction of the uh, motor rotation. Okay, let's look at one other thing here. I am keeping my polarity the same, but if you notice, the winding is different. So let me back up here. So if you notice, the winding here on the right-hand side goes in front first and then around back. Okay, so now here on the right-hand side, it goes around the back and then comes around the front. So I've, I've changed the way that the motor was wound, uh, the 
electromagnet was wound, but I kept the polarity the same. So I only changed one thing. And uh, let's see what happens here. So I have uh, positive to my right, negative to my left. Conventional current's going to come out of the positive. It's going to go around the back, come down the front, and then go around the back, come down the front again. Go around the back, come down the front, and return to the negative of my power supply. So I'm going to take my pencil or pen, and I'm going to mark down arrows on the, uh, the front of the electromagnet to show the direction of conventional current flow. I'm going to use my right hand, and I'm going to point my index finger in the direction of conventional current flow. And if you notice, my thumb is now pointed from left to right. And that means that the direction of field lines inside the magnet are going to be going from left to right, same direction that my thumb is pointed. Okay, Inside the magnet, the uh, uh, magnetic field lines are going to go from uh, south pole to north pole, so it will be south on my left and north on my right. Okay, So let's talk about uh, polarity of the magnet. To change the polarity, we've already went through this in the exercises. There, uh, some of the, here are th some of the things you can do. You can change the polarity of your voltage source, your power source. Okay, you can change the direction of the winding. Okay, um, if both are changed at the same time, you're changing two things at once, and it's actually not going to have any effect. Okay, so you need to make only one change, either the polarity or the winding. So. In the case of an electric motor, you can't get in and easily change the winding, so we're going to be always changing the polarity. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about mag electromagnetic strength and what are the determining factors for the uh, how strong an electromagnet is. Okay. There are three main main factors that contribute to this. Um, so again, I have my simple. Uh, Depiction over here, this is a direct current ele electromagnet. So how soft that core is as far as permeability, so that's that permeability number, the 50 to 3,000. The, the higher that is in permeability, the more we're going to be able to manipulate those internal domains to be able to uh, make this thing have a north and a south pole. All those domains orient in the in the same direction. So that is one of the uh, main uh, factors in how strong it is. And we're going to come up with a little uh, three-letter acronym for this, but that's permeability. So just think of P for permeability. The amount of current that goes through the wire. Now we saw when we were talking about Orsted's findings, when you increase the current, the magnetic field around the wire increased. So remember that depiction we had from 1 amp to 2 amps, it doubled in, uh, in strength. So more current, we're going to get more um, stronger fields around each of the, the wire wrappings that goes through there, and that's going to increase the uh, magnetic strength. So we're going to, our second letter in our three letter acronym is going to be I for current. And then finally, it's the number of turns of wire. If you have more turns, you're concentrating more and more electronic, uh, I mean, electromagnetic force in that um, center bar. Okay. So uh, we can, if we had a thousand turns, we would have a certain strength magnet. Well, if we doubled it to 2,000 turns, we would, it actually doesn't effectively double the wire because of losses, but um, it, it would effectively, if, if in a perfect environment, it would double the strength of the magnet. Okay, so the last letter in our three-letter acronym is N, number of turns. So this is good for your worksheet evaluation questions, your quiz questions, and your test questions, remember the acronym PIN when you're asked about electromagnetic strength. Permeability, current, I for current, and N is for number of turns. An easy way to remember this is PIN. Okay, so permeability, current, number of turns. Okay. Okay, so the core characteristics, 
um, the permeability core concentrates those magnetic field lines to form that electromagnet. And you, I'm showing here that all those domains are aligned. And if they are aligned, that means that we have current running through here. If we, uh, if we take the, uh, the power source off, these domains would go back to uh, being random orientation. Okay. The shape of the core really determines the path. Everything that I've shown you so far has just been straight, but there are um, round magnets. That's what a motor basically is, is a round magnet. Um, there are U-shaped electromagnets. Uh, they can make it in all different uh, uh, shapes and sizes. And so in this case, the north and the south pole are going to be facing each other or on the same plane here, where here they're, they're kind of opposite one another. Um, they're on the same plane horizontally. These are on the same plane vertically. So let's review. Let's list the terms that describe concepts found in electromagnetism. If you want to pause the video and then you can come back. Okay. The poles are the points at which either lines of force enter or exit the magnet. Magnetic lines of force exit the uh, north pole and they enter the south pole. Okay, so it's very important to understand the direction of current flow. Uh, well, not current flow, uh, the magnetic lines of force. Um, describe a dipole magnet and its physical properties. So dipole just means two poles. Um, and north and a south, okay? Relate how current through a wire affects the magnetic field around it. Well, we learned several principles. The current through the wire creates a rotating magnetic field around the wire. That, rotate, that rotation is based on the direction of current. And the strength of the field around that wire is dependent on the ampacity through the wire. Okay, so those are all the, the different things that we uh, discussed there. Okay, and given current flow and direction... Um, on, and the windings of the direction of the windings on the electromagnet determine the poles of the magnet. So we're going to do this on the next screen. So here is a simple example that you're going to have on your worksheets, quizzes, and tests. So if, um, if you want to pause right now, see if you can figure this out, and then bring come back, and we will we'll go through it. Okay, so if we have positive here to the right, that means we have negative to the left, that means our conventional current is going to go around the back and then down the front on each one of those wrappings. So we would bring our right hand in and point our index finger in the direction of conventional current flow. And our right thumb would then point in the direction of magnetic field lines. So our magnetic field lines are going from left to right. And if so, if that is so, the magnetic field lines will be going from the south pole to the north pole inside the magnet giving us the south pole to our left and the north pole to our right. So this concludes our lesson on electromagnetism. I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.